everybody, this is Gail, and I had a request a while back um, to make a snowflake cane, and I was so over snow <laughs> that I just never, I was looking so looking forward to spring that I kind of put that on the back shelf, and all of a sudden it hit me that I never did do that cane. And uh, so I decided I better do it while it's still winter time. You know, even though it's going to be 70 degrees here today, which I'm so thankful for, but it will get cold again. It doesn't last long. But um, there's so many different ways to make snowflakes. And I just want to show you one. Uh, and I like this one the best because it's... It gives you more dimension. There's a lot of snowflake canes out there where all they are are like sticks. You know what I mean when I say sticks? And this one has a little bit more shape to it. So I wanted to show you, and it's very simple. It's not hard at all, but I am using translucent clay. So I hope you can see it. This is translucent clay that I've rolled into a plug. This is a mixture of colors. Uh, for those of you that are patrons, you remember I did um, malachite. And I had some scrap canes that were, they'd been sitting for a while, and I know you can rejuvenate things, but these were sliced so thinly that I don't know how I would do it easily, so I decided to just mix them together and came up with this pretty color of turquoise. So we're going to have a turquoise uh, I, uh, snowflake. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plug, and I want to mark it where I want to cut it so I can look at it and see if that's about right. I think I'm going to move this one in a little bit. That's about right. And I'm going to cut this in three sections. Let me move this a little bit. I've got some clay rolled out and something else there, so a little snake. But let me... And I probably ought to use a sharper blade because my translucent is very soft. And this is the Primo translucent, the white translucent. Even with a sharper blade, it still kind of sticks. But I'll take care of that in a minute. Now you don't have to use translucent, but I'm using translucent because you can put it on a um, surface. If you're decorating a surface, Let me just fold that out and fold this out and try to pull it out a little bit. It kind of got folded in when I cut it. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to well, see the shape from where it dragged. I'm just going to straighten that out a little bit. I'm going to lay this on my blue. And I'm going to cut around it. And if I measured right, this ought to be the same size. I'm going to turn it over and put blue on the other side. And then I'm going to put these back together. As soon as I get it back in the right shape. I'll tell you, translucent, it's, it's great for projects like this, but oh man, can it get soft on you. 
I still didn't get it quite right, but we'll worry about that later. So now I've got this, and what I'm going to do, let me see, do I have a clean, a brand new blade? Let me see if a new blade will cut it better. I doubt it. But I'm going to cut diagonally across here. Now it's still going to push it down. Maybe it wasn't quite as much, but it still pushed it down. That's okay. So I've got this. And I'm going to flip this one over so that the slants are going in the same direction. And I'm going to put another piece of clay. In the middle. And it's let me trim a little bit of this excess off. Because we don't want too much. We want to keep some detail in our snowflake. Let me pull that off so it doesn't wrap around on the outside. These are just little things that you probably wouldn't worry about, but I can get real anal about some things. So now we've got this, which really is looks like the leaf canes that I've done with you. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it round. Let me move some of these blue scraps out of the way. Some of these I may be able to use. We'll find out in a minute. I'm making this round so that I can reduce it. And I'm going to use Teresa Salgado's cane ends so I don't lose too much of this and just start squeezing in the middle. And as you squeeze in the middle, it's going to get longer this way. Sorry for the silence. I'm just, you know, I get to working on something and that's all I concentrate on. Now this blue is not quite as soft as the translucent, so I want to be careful and not try to reduce this too fast or the blue will crack on the inside, which we don't want. Try to keep your lines straight. So that your cane is straight. Don't want crooked snowflakes. Have you ever seen snowflakes? Uh, when they fall, if you catch them on your sh uh, coat sleeve or something, if you look real close, you can see all the little crystals that form. And they're gorgeous. As soon as I can make sure, as soon as I'm sure that the blue is going to move the same as the translucent, I will 
roll them on my surface. And I think we're probably there. But keeping those cane ends on there has prevented the, in, the ends from getting sunken in at the beginning. It might happen now, but we won't lose as much now as it when the when the cane was bigger. So let me just get this evened up so I can start rolling it. And I need to roll this till it's at least 10 inches or so. Let me get my ruler out so I'll know when I get there. I've got a ways to go yet. But as you do this, every once in a while pull it out and tug it and just make sure your lines are fairly straight. That one got covered up so I'll have to try to put that somewhere where it's not going to matter. Let's see, that's about 10 inches of good cane. So I'll cut off this end. Well, I lost one of my stripes. Let's see if I lost it on the other end. See, this is what happens when the blue doesn't reduce at the same speed as the translucent. You lose your shape. Let me cut in the middle and see what it's like in the middle. The middle is okay. So hopefully I can get six slices of this. And I want to do them about an inch and a half long. I prefer my smaller blade. Just making sure my canes are still okay. So I've got three let me cut from this side. I haven't finished reducing this side. Whoops, what did I get on my clay? Some purple. Purple's not going to work. So I'm just going to shave off that little bit of it. Must have been on my ruler there. And I'll just lay that there, and I will cut an inch and a half, and an inch and a half. And I think I'll still use this over here. Cut that at an inch and a half. Okay, so we've got these. Now if you look at this, we're going to pinch this up a little bit. Where the top is, see my top right here? I'm just going to pinch along that line just a little bit. Doesn't have to be much, but just enough so that you will get the shape that we're looking for and do that on all four of these, all six of these. And make sure you keep your lines right. If you look at the top, the top one has a line at the top. This line. 
this just helps you keep track of the position that you need your cane to go in. This line. See, it's real easy to keep your, if, as long as you keep your line straight. So I'm going to let these sit for a minute and I'm going to work on the center. And since those are an inch and a half long, I need the center to be an inch and a half long so that it won't stick out on either end. So I'll cut that. And what I want to do is wrap this with a thin piece of blue. And I think I'll just use this. Let me roll this to a number three. Let me turn it once. So I want to take this and roll it, let me measure it, cut this off here, cut that off there, and let me cut this even, it doesn't look very even. And I'm just going to roll this around the translucent. And you know how you can tell where it's where it ends. If you roll all the way till the clay touches the, the clay, it'll leave a little mark. So you'll know where to trim. And that will that comes together fine. But now what I want to do is wrap this in another sheet of translucent. So I'm going to lay this on my translucent and trim the end. I'll trim that end and make this a straight edge. Then I will start to wrap this the same way. Oops, that didn't cut very well. I overlapped a little bit. I must. It's hard when I'm working away from me, which I have to do when I am doing my videos. It's not where it normally would be if I were working myself. But I'm working on changing my my workspace. We'll see what happens. Let me run this through. Because I'm going to wrap this one more time in the blue. Make your mark. You cut on the mark. And it worked that time because I, I leaned over a little bit further. Hope you didn't see my hair. Not that there's anything wrong with it. So now we have a center. And I got this from Pinterest. There was a French artist that did this and it just looked I like the way it looked and like I say there's so many different ways to make snowflakes so I've got this let me just trim a little end off 
so you can see what we've got. See, it's translucent blue, translucent blue. Now let's put this together. I'm going to stand this up. And I'm going to put the rounded end. Let me start with one right on that seam so it'll help me space them a little bit. Although that's going to be kind of big. I need to make this smaller. You don't want the center to be bigger around than the rest of your snowflake or it's going to be a really wonky looking snowflake. So let's trim the, roll this down a little bit. And again, I will cut it to one and a half inches. I'll use this to make snowflakes with the rest of it. That's better. And put this on here on this side. And snowflakes have six sides. It's not like a star that has five. So it makes it a little difficult to place them. because it's, it's an even number. It's hard to do an even number. So I'm going to place these on to where they seem to look the best. Be sure you look at your cane. Well, that one's a lot longer. I must have cut that too long. But make sure that when you place these, that you place them so that your point is sticking straight out, that it's not going to be tilted over. You, know, you want it to make sure this point sticks out. And this one, I must have cut something short because I've all of a sudden got yep, well, no, that just is an inch and a inch and a half. I must have just stretched these others, but make sure that you're let me come in a little bit so you can see this. make sure that. This little piece, the stem, if it was a leaf, would go meets this blue. Like this one is kind of sideways. You don't want that to be sideways. You want it out a little bit. These just got stretched a little when I pinch the edges. I'll just cut it off after I get it on here. And be sure you look at both ends. Because we've got to have room for one more in here. I don't know why this one keeps wanting to turn. And this one's going to be too long, so I'm going to just trim off a little bit of that one from the beginning and put that in here. And again, check both sides. Make sure your pieces are the way you want them. And make sure that your longer lines here, this longer line right here, try to make sure it'll meet this one when it starts being reduced. Don't put anything between it because you want those to meet up together in order to get the design that I'm looking for. Oh, this translucent is so soft. All right, 
I think that's going to be it. Now what we need to do is take some translucent to fill in our spaces. And the best way to do that is to roll out snakes and pinch it into a triangle. Just press it down. Oh, let me come back out. Press it into a triangle. And I'll need more than this, but I've got plenty over here. And cut them into inch and a half. nine eight and a half so that one's probably going to be too small and put them in these put the point end into those spaces and just roll it from one end to the other so that you get those spaces totally filled in Do the same all the way around. So there's my point. I'm going to push the point down in there and just follow it all the way down. Trim off your excess. So this might work. Whoops, that, I want those to meet. This one is interfering with my design because I didn't watch where I was putting it because I want these two lines to meet and then I'll put this at the top of that. Does that make sense? Because I said I wanted these lines to meet. You just have to manipulate it a little bit to make sure your lines come together. And let me roll some more translucent. I've got air in there. I can feel it. If you roll your clay and it feels floppy, I guess that's a word, that is the air inside your clay. So just be sure you press that out. And so you can tell where, where the lines are not going to meet. Here they're not going to meet because they're... So I just have to kind of push that down a little so that those lines will meet. Then put your translucent in. And that this translucent is so soft, I'm hoping that the cane is going to turn out okay. Then what you want to do is take the rest of your translucent and roll it into a sheet. <laughs> just cut it into sections that will fit in between here just so that you can fill that up and then just do that and then we're going to take some more translucent. I'm going to have to um, 
condition a little bit more and we will cover this and cut it and see what we've got so I'll be right back okay I've rolled out some translucent on a number three and I'm gonna lay this cane on here I've already trimmed this in straight And I'm just going to wrap this once. And this will keep it nice and clean on the outside so that you don't have... Um, see how it's stuck? This is just so soft. I'll just trim it this way. But so that you don't have it, all those bumpy layers that you, know, you get from having the... Um, Putting the filling in the blanks on your cane and I am going to reduce this a little bit and what I would do with this I would get it smooth and I would let me see if I can cut this. There you go. There's our snowflake. But see why I wanted these points to come together? Because it kind of gives it more of a shape on the inside. Almost looks like a star, but it's six-sided. But this is a snowflake that I just, I love this snowflake. But again, like I started to say, what I would do is reduce this down in several sizes. And then keep it, and then when you want to use your snowflakes, you can use them. If you want to use a, make a pendant, you could um, use this size. If you wanted to make earrings, you might want to leave them this size. You might want them a little bit smaller. If you're going to use them as a back, on a background of something, maybe you're doing a sheet of clay with other canes on it and you want to put some snowflakes in it, you would want those to be real tiny. So I would reduce them down to whatever size works best for you, for the, whatever project you want to do. So I hope you enjoyed that. I had fun. I thought it was a good little tutorial to do. Now that it's nice and warm, I didn't mind doing a snowflake cane. But like I said, it was a request, and I wanted to make sure that I got this done before I got, before we got to in the middle of summer. So, hope you like it. I will be back again soon with another polymer clay tutorial. Thanks. Bye-bye.